This is Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller, mortgage expert with New American Funding. For the next hour, you'll learn impactful insider information as Christian and Dan teach about the ins and outs of Seattle's real estate market. Now, here's Christian and Dan. Hello, hello, good afternoon, and happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Real Estate Radio on KKOL 1300 AM. Good afternoon. Mr. Dan Kelly. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm awake. You better be awake. (laughs) Yeah, well. I'm almost off. Sometimes I'm not, so. (laughs) Well, we work different schedules, I think, too. I'm up early. You're up late. And I'm also up early. You're up early and late. Mm -hmm. You're all over the place. We'll talk about that later. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, yeah, Dan, I mean, it's it was a good weekend. That was fun. Yeah, we hung out with you all weekend. Yeah. A couple of housewarming parties. We did some work. That's called work. work. Housewarming party. Well, I mean, yeah, it's if fun. If you want to call it that. I lo- I love getting, I mean, we, you and I are both 100% in our businesses. Nobody pays us unless we go and meet clients and mm-hmm. close happy clients. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a way to work. Exactly. Housewarming parties, meeting new people. Eating good food, good Mediterranean f- Express. Yeah. Again, yeah, again, good. they're not paying us for this. No. I just love their food. Great food. Um, drinking some good wine. Good wine. Some good yeah. beer. I don't know if I'm getting old. I turned 40 last year. Mm-hmm. I've never liked wine. Do you I know? Like, I like weird? wine now. I, me too. Just within the last two weeks, all of a sudden, I'm all about wine. But let's talk about that in a minute. Okay. So first, um, did you hear about U Village? Well, I was joking with you before the before the broadcast, <laughs> you know, um, about the prophet, awesome, <laughs> awesome, comes out of the New Testament. No, seriously, three week. What was it? Three shows ago, something like that. You yeah. said, "Hey, I've got a hunch, mm-hmm. kind of in, some insider info that Amazon is coming and building a brick and mortar bookstore mm-hmm. in the U Village." And doggone it, it was all over the news mm-hmm. last week. Opened up last week. Yeah. Have you seen it? Did you go in? I haven't gone in. I drove past. There was a line out the door. Okay. I didn't want to waste my time to go yeah. into a bookstore. That didn't seem exciting to me. But, no. But um, we, I saw some pictures that looked pretty cool. Yeah. Um, they actually had, uh, so they do like the top 10 wished for books mm. on Amazon, and yep. they had a whole shelf with that, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yep. So they're using the data from their website to promote in-store, which is pretty cool. It's That's, yeah. Speaking of books, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you started something last week mm-hmm. that I, I don't want to take credit. Did I introduce this book to you? Yeah, a couple of, about a year and a half ago. Okay, mm-hmm. well, so you talk about it all the time. I talk about it all the time. I did it. So basically, it's the Miracle Morning mm-hmm. by Hal Elrod. Mm-hmm. And Hal, if if you know, as you're listening, this you got to look this guy up. And the story, his story is phenomenal. This is a guy at 19 landed his first job as and he wanted to be a speaker, mm-hmm. and um, he he finished a. Uh, presentation at a hotel, resort, whatever, was leaving with his girlfriend, I think fiance at the time, and it was late, merged onto the freeway, I believe this was in Southern California, merged onto the freeway, there was a drunk driver going the wrong way on the interstate, hit him head on, killed him. He was dead. They brought him back to life. Yeah, they brought him back to life. They said he would never walk again. He would have severe brain damage. Hmm. Um, And this is at like 1920. Wow. 20 years of age. And... uh, Long story short, he's written two books, well, more, more now, but the books, two books, yeah. one that preceded The Miracle Morning, mm-hmm. was uh, was basically a summary of his death or near death, death experience, wow. coming back. But The Miracle Morning is a phenomenal read. It's a short read, but it's basically mm-hmm. the outline or the w- exactly what he used to recover from that. But went into, he proved all the doctors wrong. Mm-hmm. This guy now is a nationally renowned motivational speaker. So I didn't even realize that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I read the, so Hal has numerous Miracle mm-hmm. Morning books, mm-hmm. and he's done niches on mm-hmm. them all. So he has Miracle Morning for real estate agents, yep. and Miracle Morning for salespeople, and yep. Miracle Morning for, I Network don't know Network marketers, yeah, yeah, yeah. all sorts of different yeah. things. So, yeah, he's uh, in the Miracle Morning for real estate. It doesn't say that he's the one that... Yeah, that I mean, they had a story about it, but it was about some other guy. Yeah. It wasn't about him, so that's crazy. I didn't well, realize that. He's phenom- He's a phenomenal human being. I've met him. I've interviewed him mm-hmm. on, you on know, your my show. YouTube yeah. show, and um, I've spoke at events with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just so happy for his success. But I, yeah. you know, I personally read The Miracle Morning about a year and a half ago, and um, 
followed it to a T. You know, I'm a morning guy. Mm-hmm. I'm a structured guy. You know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but what he explains in that book, and I think the subtitle to The Miracle Morning is how to how to win your day before 8 a.m., yep. essentially. Yep, and it's, exactly. You know, I don't want to spoil it. I want, I, I'd encourage, I don't care if you're 20. I don't care. I mean, I've taught it to my kids, and my kids are, you know, mm-hmm. I have a seven and a nine-year-old. Yep. Um, you know, certain parts of it. But whether you're, you know, 10, whether you have kids, whether you're an adult, whether you're a business owner or an employee, mm-hmm. um, or you're 60, 70, yep. it's, it's a phenomenal book, and it's a phenomenal process to just begin your day and mm-hmm. begin it in control. So much of us, Christian, from the time we wake up with an alarm clock, waking up to an alarm clock is reactive mm-hmm. versus being proactive and waking up um, with intent. So what, one of the things that he teaches, and this is the one big aha that I got out of the book, and then I'll stop. I'll shut up and we can <laughs> move on. But uh, um, one of the big things that I got out of that book was structuring your morning, your day mm-hmm. begins the night before. Exactly. When that was one of the big yeah, ahas I got huge. too. Basically yeah. plan your day the night before. The night before. So then when you wake up, yep. you know exactly what you got to do. Yeah. You don't have to think about it. It's just done. And so many people, Christian, including myself, I know I, I don't want to speak for you, but it, we all, so many of us struggle with, okay, hey, I'm going to get up at, at 5 a.m. and I'm going to start work today. Or I'm going to get up mm-hmm. at 5 a.m. and I'm going to go work out. Mm-hmm. And then the alarm clock, clock goes off. And the snooze button And the snooze hit. button. So, yep. And it's so easy to stay in mm-hmm. bed when it's warm. And so one of the things that changed my life was the night before when you sit down and you set your alarm clock mm-hmm. on your iPhone or whatever mm-hmm. you have, whatever mm-hmm. gadget you have, you tell yourself, he talks a lot about self-talk, you tell yourself, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m., and let's say I'm going to bed at 10, 10 o'clock. What mm-hmm. is that? Seven hours of sleep? Mm-hmm. You tell yourself, seven hours of sleep is, is good plenty. enough for me. Yep, exactly. And so that you're, it's already in your mind. It's already mm-hmm. in your brain. And then when that alarm clock goes off, or as Zig Ziglar used mm-hmm. to call it, mm-hmm. your opportunity clock exactly. goes off, yep. uh, you're ready to rock. So, hey, phenomenal read. I'm so excited that you, you've started it, though. I mean, you look yeah. good. I mean, I know you've only been doing it a week. What have you lost? I 35 know. pounds? Yep. Easy. <laughs> Easy 35 pounds. <laughs> You look great, dude. You, you look like you. Uh, no, seriously, I see you all. I see you a lot. You yeah. Good. Down, down a uh, belt buckle size, yep. and it's only been yeah. literally a week. So tell me what you're doing. So the miracle morning, you get up structured. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me about real quickly. So, so I'm doing kind of a combo. Okay. I'm doing miracle morning and the four hour body, which Love is it. Tim Ferriss, yep. who also wrote uh, Four Hour Work Week. Yep. Um, so I'm doing those two at the same exact time because cool. I'm a guy that I don't like to do things unless I know they're proven. Mm-hmm. And obviously, he's proven yeah, through oh, <laughs> three years of study to figure yep. out what the best way to yep. basically lose weight, work out, yep. and get strong. Yep. Um, so, I don't like wasting my time. Yeah. I like to do things that work. So, you get up. Mm-hmm. I get up. Uh, first thing I do is I drink a big glass of mm-hmm. water. Um, then I start cooking breakfast. So, I have a lot of times I have eggs. I eat mm-hmm. two, three, four, five eggs depending on what else I'm having with it. Then I have some spinach, some beans of some sort, um, chicken sometimes. Some There's some amazing local sauerkrauts that have uh, um, seasonings already added in. So that's kind of okay. what I do. Eat that, and then after that, then I go downstairs in the quiet because everybody yep. else is upstairs. Um, go downstairs, do the, the savers routine yep. from the book, yep. and do some workout, and, and then start the day. Great. Yeah, you know, the, and you'll have to read the book to learn more about the savers. Those are mm-hmm. acronyms for a few steps Acronym. that you take. Yeah, more acronyms. But we those really need that button. Y- yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> the ding. You said it again. Yeah, exactly. You used an acronym again. But no, the the uh, that's how it's so simple. It breaks it down. Yeah. You know, he talks about even. You know, I've never been a big meditator. I've, mm-hmm. I've really until I read the Miracle Morning. I never yeah. meditated ever. Yeah, most people and haven't. No, and the neat thing about it was taking. One minute and challenging, challenging myself to have nothing going on to in my brain. Think. Yeah, mm-hmm. control it's my hard. breathing and yeah. just to not think. And and so you know, but that's kind of uh, that's part of it. But the the glass of water, the uh, I'm a big Grant Cardone fan. Mm-hmm. He's a he wrote the book Ten X book sells book yeah. sells leader, um, but he has a book called Ten X, mm-hmm. and he has a Ten X workout. And it's mm. really, it's 10 movements that you do 10 times each, and mm-hmm. then you repeat that. Mm. And so I, I work out in the afternoon typically, but what mm-hmm. I do is I would do that, I would drink 
first thing I do before I go to bed and wake up is drink a glass of water. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would do that. And then I would instantly, while my coffee's being made, mm-hmm. I would do that 10 X workout. And it just, what it does just with gets that, your heart rate yeah, going. It gets, yeah, and it wakes you up. It wakes you up. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it does anything mentally or whatever, but it just, you well, know, it releases endorphins and it makes you happy yep. basically. That's yeah. what it does. And that's a big part of, of the miracle morning. And then you can start your day. If you're a business owner, if you're trying to read a book, you time block mm-hmm. to, to achieve something. So yep. I'm really proud of you, man. The mir- it's a, I'm glad you started it. And, yep. uh, and perfect timing. I think the first time that I read it and started it was right around the new year as well. So mm-hmm. I think it was December of 2014. So hmm. good for you, man. Yeah, it's kind of fun. We kind of went off on that tangent for quite a while, but it's valuable. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It, yeah. It's changing my life after just yeah. a week. I mean, I feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, I feel a lot more structured because sometimes, I mean, having this kind of job, yeah. I don't go to the office at a specific time. Yeah. I don't have specific meetings on every day at 11. I have this meeting with this person and all that stuff like some people have. I mean, I don't really know how a corporate job works, but yeah. I assume that's kind of how it is. You have yeah. your thing that you do every day. Yeah. I don't have that. Mine's well, yeah. totally up in the air. Well, you have more structure, mm-hmm. I guess. This allow in a non-structured career, yep. it gives you structure to, your, exactly. to at least begin your day. Yep. But uh, no, I mean, the reason why I wanted to spend a little bit more time on it, whether you're like, again, whether you're a teenager or you're 60, 70, mm-hmm. 80, um, it's just a phenomenal read. So I encourage I mean, you, yeah, look it on up. On Amazon, I think it has over 500 yeah. reviews, yeah. which is pretty crazy pretty for good. a book. Yeah. And they're all, I think it has an average of 4.9 mm. stars mm-hmm. out of five. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. pretty intense. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, and I've even said this with Hal, Hal Elrod, the mm-hmm. author, when he uh, when we spoke together before. There's nothing in that book from, you know, I've studied sales and studied success and, mm-hmm. and read a lot of those self-help books. There's nothing in that book that you haven't necessarily heard of before. No, but what he's, he's taken Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, all of these phenomenal people, and he used those guys to cure him and mm-hmm. help heal him. And then he put it together in a tiny little book yeah. and created a system. And yeah. it's he has created the Miracle Move, Miracle Morning Movement. You gotta look mm-hmm. him up on Facebook, it's crazy. join the group. How many people are yeah. into it too. Yeah. So anyways, Miracle Morning, Hal Elrod, look it up on Amazon. Yeah. You'll, you'll be thank, you'll be happy you did. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how we went on that for so long, but that it, it makes sense. Yeah. It's worth it. Let's um, try and get him on the show. I've interviewed should. him before. We yeah. can totally do that. We should totally get him on the show. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, so pretty soon here, we got to take a break. Uh, when we come back, I get to get my home inspector yeah. in here, and he is going to talk about seller mm. inspections. So that's when... As a home seller, yeah. you're thinking, "Hey, I need to." Christian awesome. I and need Dan to. Uh, continues after oh. this. The hell? That was. Time for more Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. All right, hey, welcome back to Seattle Real Estate Radio on KQOL. This is Dan Keller, and this is actually one of my favorite parts of the show every week where I get to learn, well, we all get to learn a little bit more about the housing market and what's going on. So what's going on with the market, Christian? So surprisingly, it is actually picking up. What? So yeah, it's it's quite odd. Um, all of a sudden, I have, pro- I don't even know how many, probably within the last two weeks, I've had people say, I probably have 10 or 12 people that say, I want to buy a house, and I want to buy it before the end of the year. Yeah, okay. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, we can do that, but it's going to be pretty tight. But two of them, one of them got an an, an offer accepted yesterday, and then the other one, um, they are doing a pre-inspection this afternoon, and then uh, the one that just got their acceptance yesterday... They're doing theirs on Monday. Nice. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's surprising. It's it's picking up. So this is reminding me of last year, last yeah. winter, last fall. Um, it did not die down. Mm. It just continued strong throughout the throughout the winter. Usually, so in general, what happens? So people know mm-hmm. this is not common. Yeah. Usually. What happens is from Halloween until New Year's, it's pretty dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not dead, but it slows down. Um, if you imagine a bell curve, January is the very, very beginning, mm-hmm. the summer is kind of the peak, and then it kind of tapers off again until mm-hmm. the end of December. It's not really happening this year. Good. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. So surprisingly, it is busy. Um, 
I'm predicting this is my own personal prediction. I'm guessing it's going to be like this throughout the throughout yep. the new year. Really steady. I don't, I don't think it's going to slow down. Okay. So buyers, it's still going to be somewhat tough. Um, there's, it's going to be competitive. Sellers, still a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not losing out by doing it over the winter right now, which generally I would recommend waiting until January, sure. February, March. Sure. But it doesn't seem like you're going to need to this year. Okay. So. There what you about go. Inventory. Inventory is good. Inventory Inventory's is low. steady. It's steady. actually steady. So okay. steady being low. Yeah. I mean, it's been low all year. Yeah. It's going to continue to be low. Um, but again, I mean, if you're a seller, that's actually mm. a good time to do it. Yeah. Um, as you know, rates are kind of doing their thing right now, yeah. and it's still good for buyers. Yeah. So good, good. there you go. Right on, man. Thanks for the info. Thanks for the update. Yeah. So I am actually pretty pumped. So anyone that was actually watching the video online saw me pointing at Jeff who is Jeff Keller, uh, and he is my home inspector, the guy that I use all the time. He is the owner of Alki Inspections. He has an extensive background in all phases of construction, remodeling, and restoration. Uh, he inspects residential real estate for both sellers and buyers. And yes, I said sellers, hmm. which is interesting, yeah. and that is actually what we are going to be talking about. So Jeff is awesome. He's accurate, reasonably priced. He's honest, super nice guy. Loves the Seahawks, loves the Huskies, um, likes the Mariners, loves the Mariners. Loves the Mariners. Loves the Mariners. It sounds like you're talking about me. I know. But but I'm actually talking about you're Jeff. You're talking about Jeff, and we have Jeff the same Keller. last name. Dan Keller, no Jeff relation. Keller, no relation. Never met the guy until today. Yeah. It's well, kind of funny because uh, people often ask yeah. me, are they brothers? Yeah. And I'm like, no. No relation at all. Didn't even think about it until you asked me. Well, he's got so, a good name, so yeah, it's all good. well, you know. It's not an awesome, but it, no. it works. It's not awesome. <laughs> it's not awesome. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm pumped that Jeff's here. Cool, cool, cool. I'm pumped that Jeff's here. So, um, I'm hey, pumped that Jeff's here. <laughs> <laughs> we are all pumped that Jeff's here. I love it. So I'm, in, I'm intrigued. What is the seller inspection? Yeah, well, Jeff, why Tell don't you it, add yeah. into that? Well, the seller inspection is, uh, is giving somebody a heads up on what the, in, the buyer's inspection is going to find out. Mm. When they sell their home and they get their offer accepted, they're going to have a buyer's inspection. And what happens then is going to be kind of panic to them if there's a lot of things they don't know about. Mm-hmm. So this give them a heads up and a chance to either repair uh, or get better understanding of a problem or maybe get bids so they actually have real prices and they can mm. go into the, the negotiations without a gun to their head, yeah. not knowing that. Exactly. And this so, is, I mean, yeah. I recommend it for all my you sellers. Um, it's a big deal. It makes the process as a seller, it mm-hmm. makes the process less stressful. Mm. It definitely just, calms them down. It yeah. does, because they're not concerned. They're not worried. Mm-hmm. They go, all right, yeah, I get it. I know yeah. what the buyer's inspection is yeah. going to pop up with. Yeah. If they're big things, I'll take care of it before I put it on the market, yeah. which as an agent, I love because it's going to make the house sell faster because all the big issues are taken care of. And, and it's probably going to sell for a lot mm. more because there's no things that the buyer has to go, oh, i got to save up for fixing that. Yeah, they know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I just I kind of jumped ahead. Those are, That was one of the questions that I wanted to get to. But um, real quick, tell us a little bit more about your background, our listeners a little bit more about your background, and um, what you actually do before you started inspecting homes. Well, I was back in the 90s, I got into <clears throat> commercial uh, supply. So okay. I was a sales rep so calling on commercial contractors. <clears throat> and then I got from, from commercial contractors, I went into high-end residential mm. uh, in, t- in the year ni- 2000 and started doing contracting uh, in high-end residential. And then in 07, went to all remodel, all phase of residential construction. So you don't know anything about homes? No. Very little. Very, very little. <laughs> well, you know, you made a good point right there. And, and Jeff, you can chime in anytime you want. But... I'm seeing a lot of this right now. When mm-hmm. the real estate market heats up, mm-hmm. what do people do? They get into real estate. Yep. So one start, phase or another of real y- estate. Yeah, you start seeing your aunt. Hey, I'm selling real estate now, or your mm-hmm. uncle, or your but whatever. And I've seen the same trend with home inspectors mm-hmm. where and sewer scope inspectors. Yeah, <laughs> definitely yeah. A, b- yeah. a big influx. You know, and, and yep. for, you know, for example, I'm taking nothing away from this example. This guy might be great, and he may in his past life have built or whatever but yeah the the most recent example a uh, firefighter wants to do it on the side when he's not on his 24-hour shift so he's inspecting mm. homes now hmm. you know and if i'm a homeowner if i'm a real estate professional that's relying on their expertise i want mm-hmm. somebody that's built somebody that actually has contractors been in the trenches been in the trenches knows yeah. what shortcuts people take yeah seen what shortcuts yeah. people take knows what shortcuts to look for look for yep I think I was one of four in my class of 20 that was actually an ex-contractor. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, they're people from all walks of life. 
just looking oh. for a new new profession. Yeah. Wow. I just kind of segued from doing the commercial stuff, which we were doing inspections, commercial buildings, then yeah. multifamily to this. Wow. So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, well, obviously, really you only good. work with the best, Christian, so it's no surprise. But <laughs> Of course. Um, well, you two <laughs> kind of fit that bill. It's a little loose, but you fit that bill. I yeah, no, it. exactly. So you talked about seller inspections. Um, are there any other, obviously, buy home buyer inspections, are there any other inspections that uh, our listeners should know about? Yeah, and when Christian mentioned earlier the, the state of the market, there's an <laughs> inspection that's really, really happening quite often now, and that's the, the pre-offer inspection because mm-hmm. – the, s- the selling agents or, th- or the uh, listing agents are, are putting houses on the market, say, on a Thursday or Friday, accepting offers on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, and there's a panic rush to go see this house mm-hmm. because the inventory is so low. Yep. So in order for them to get some information quickly and not spend a bunch of money, because this could happen to them many, many times before they finally land a house, they do. I do an inspection for them, or people like me do, and it's a no-report inspection and they literally follow you around and you just data dump on them everything you see mm-hmm. it gives them a much better feel and often that's not the last time you'll be involved mm-hmm. in that house if they do get it they may want a more extensive written report but mm-hmm. but it saves them some money it's a little bit faster and and it's becoming very popular no good good uh yeah good that's, question that's that, the way to go yeah. too and we're actually doing one this afternoon yeah so later actually so, I Almost mean, obviously, in, in, in yeah. a market that's as hot as, it, as, yeah. as we're in right now. And you need to do it yeah. to make your offer competitive yep. as a buyer. Yep. It's just, it's the number one thing you pretty mm-hmm. much have to do if there's more than one offer on the home. So when you do a pre-inspection, mm-hmm. t- typically, you're waiving your inspection contingencies, yep. correct? Yep. Okay. So you're getting it done ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So you know there's no major issues. You're mm-hmm. okay with what the inspector has yep. found. And you're okay waiving it because you don't yeah. need to do one anymore. So You've already done it. It's much like waiving your financing. Hey, if you've already been underwritten, yeah, don't lose your job and you're good, right? Yeah, exactly. You know? So, okay, yep. So here's a here's a, a question that I know that we're gonna get emails on, Christian. Mm-hmm. Follow up, you guys and, and our listeners are doing a great job contacting us with yeah. follow up questions or hitting us up online on the social uh, network platforms. But what are are there differences in price from doing a pre inspection to a seller inspection to a home buyer inspection? There are, there are, in the and the prices really are 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 flexible because mm-hmm. some people are going to come to you with a thousand square foot condo and say, I want a pre-offer inspection. Mm-hmm. That's really quick. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the prices, uh, you know, start around $250 for a single family home pre-offer mm-hmm. and, and they're about $350 for a seller's inspection for a s- typical single family home mm-hmm. and then uh, 425 for a buyer's inspection. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So it's kind of square footage based. Yeah. Square somewhat. footage based. That's up to about twenty five hundred feet typically. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, in which most of these houses are right now yeah. we're seeing. So most stuff in Seattle, the the pretty hot neighborhoods, that's what mm-hmm. they're gonna be. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. And then so then tell talk to me about how long does it take? Let's say uh Seattle, nineteen twenty seven, you know, craftsman. <laughs> Mm-hmm. How long is a, a uh, typical, not a pre-inspection, but a typical four home days. Inspe- Four days. <laughs> yes, it's a very long process. He's very cheap for, for it by the hour. <laughs> we, you work for like 12 cents an hour. Exactly. <laughs> so that's, it's a two and a half to three hour process okay. on an older home. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you can do a pre-inspection on the same home in probably less than two hours. Mm, uh, because okay. certainly there's, you're not taking photographs. Sure. You're not taking many notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On a pre-inspection, are you generating a full report? Like I've seen inspection mm. reports before. I'm sure, you, obviously, you generate a report. But are you doing the se- a similar type report, or or it's actually a different report. The 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 the, pr- the, pr- the seller's inspection is actually uh, a, a narrative of of what I see. I walk around in the house, just tells you the story. So you take yeah. photographs of all the issues or all the defects or just things that are interesting to talk to about the with mm. the seller. And then you, I, I write a narrative about that, and then I talk about uh, what, what can you do with this. Well, here's the solutions. Here's the type of contractors you need if you're going to need to get bids from a contractor. Mm. And, and here's some products you can use and prices and where the availability of those products. So I kind of give them a roadmap to get out of those situations if they want to do it themselves. And that's, or, that's yeah. one of the things that I love about you versus some other inspectors that I've used in the past is you actually know yeah. the products that are out there mm-hmm. and know which ones are good. And you recommend them in the report or whatever. You actually recommend, hey, you know, for this, I would use this specific product because I know it works and it works really well. Mm. You know, w- one last question before we head to break, though. I want to. I wanted to ask you. This is intriguing because I've never heard of a seller's inspection. This is mm-hmm. neat. I've heard of it's sellers, a newer, newer kind of deal. Yeah, not everybody's yeah. doing it. No, yet. I've heard of sellers ordering appraisals before. Mm-hmm. You know that were really suspect on, the, you know, their value. Yeah. But hey, Jeff. Um, 
do sellers then, if a seller does a, a an inspection, do they then provide that report, that inspection to potential buyers to look at as they're touring the home? Some brokers, that's what their their processes are. They get the seller's inspection, they lay it on the counter. Mm-hmm. Nice. And okay. Then, and then they're at the same time, they're not allowing people to inspect the home. Yep. So that's kind of their... Okay. Yeah, so that's one strategy to use, and it it actually works out pretty well because instead of having 10 people doing Mm pre-inspections in a three-day period, you already have one done, and they don't have to worry about it. Tons of traffic through the house, yeah. Wow. Okay. Hey, I learned something. This is crazy. That's why you're here, Dan. That's (laughs) it. I'm a student. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, after the break, we are going to be back with Mr. Dan Keller, not Jeff Keller, Mr. Dan Keller's Mortgage Minute. We're also going to pick Jeff's brain a little bit more about these inspections. So stay tuned. Real Estate Radio on KKOL 1300 AM. You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. We're back with Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. Welcome back. This is Seattle Real Estate Radio on KKOL 1300. This segment is sponsored by the one and only Alki Inspections. And now it's time, before we get into talking with more with Jeff a little bit more, we are going to talk with Dan about his weekly mortgage minute. So, yeah. Dan, what the heck is going on in the mortgage market? Because yeah, it's a little, a little crazy yeah. at times. But what's going on this last week? Last week was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last week was crazy. So I'm going to spend a real quick minute. I don't want to get into details, but I will tell you that from Thursday, well, excuse me, Wednesday of last week mm-hmm. to Friday, mm-hmm. we saw, and this may not mean much to our listeners, but we saw a 150 basis point increase in interest rates. And what that is is a 100 basis points is typically a 1% cost for that rate. Hmm. So basically, if you were quoted a 3.875 rate on Tuesday of last week, mm-hmm. Friday, that 3.875 rate is now costing you about 1.25% to 1.5% of for that loan. rate mm-hmm, of the loan amount. Wow. So yeah, the market worsened last week. And you know, I, I'm telling all my clients this right now and all my real estate agents that the market's sensitive. It's sensitive. It's been sensitive. Much like it's, you. Yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> I am sensitive. You're very sensitive. Yeah. I see you cry a lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. Those are laugh, tears of laughter. Yes, exactly. A lot especially of the times, especially in the studio. <laughs> you guys don't see all the takes that we have to make sometimes. But anyhow, being live is, is difficult. But, um, you know, it's really sensitive right now. It's been on life support for years. And... You know, certain segments of the market are looking for it to come off. And so any good news, economic good news, mm-hmm. is going to spark a rally, which it did last week. You know, Janet mm-hmm. Yellen came out. And, and, and she is? She is the Fed chairwoman. Okay. Okay. Replaced Ben Bernanke, which mm-hmm. we uh, got to know and either love or hate mm-hmm. over the past five years, but four or yep. five years. But, you know, anytime she says anything positive, the market reacts. Well, on Friday, the jobs report came out, and it came out with just some substantial improvements in jobs. Well, you know, whether it's a fling, whether it's short-lived, we'll see next month, Mm -hmm. but um, the market reacted on Friday. So Mm. rates are up. Rates are up probably about an eighth to a quarter of a percent in Mm. a matter of one week time. So, hey. Wow. Yeah. Good economic news means rates go up. Bad economic news, rates stay down. We've had a poor economy for the past five or six years. Rates have been down. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Um, We're certainly going to keep you posted in the next month. We have another good jobs report in December, and you're going to probably see the Fed increase their the Fed rate. Finally, so there's been a lot of talk and They've been flirting with that for a long yep. time. There, the, a lot of people are saying that the news on Friday is exactly what they needed to just pull the trigger on it. So got it. Yeah, T- tune in next week. You never know. Yeah, we'll keep you posted. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. That was uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Very informative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I always learn something. I try to keep it. It's so complicated. I know. And I can sound there's nerdy. So many variables. Yeah. I try to. Right I don't want to. Yeah disrespect anybody but i try to dummy it down for myself and my clients and, well, and for yeah. me for you honestly yeah. you're just dumbing it down for me <laughs> i need that <laughs> well, i hope it helped <laughs> i learned jeff did you learn i did a all lot. right well good i'm waiting for next week i know he's gonna listen we have a new listener <laughs> yes we're up to two we're up to I'm two def- listeners i'm definitely gonna listen next week <laughs> good good, good. <laughs> 
All right, so as you guys can hear, Jeff Keller is here with us. He is the owner of Alki Inspections, and we're talking with him about seller inspections. So last segment, that's what we were talking about. We're going to continue on with that. So, Jeff, what are some of the major things that you're looking for at a house in a seller inspection? What are kind of the, the big things? The quick and easy would be the rooftop mm-hmm. and, and how that's constructed and, and the age and the condition. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, yesterday I showed a house. The clients, they're doing their pre-inspection this afternoon. You're helping me with it. Great. Um, the roof is slightly bowed. Okay, so what does that mean? That's What's structural. The fix? So, mm-hmm. so, and it, it's certainly something can be fixed, and mm-hmm. anything on a house can be fixed, which is nice. It's yeah. sticks and bricks, right? So, yep. um, that that can be fixed. And what I would do is go inside the attic and see what exactly needs to be done. And, and that is what you will be doing. That's what I'll be doing later today. <laughs> <laughs> So is that a huge scary thing that, no, it's that you need to be worried about? Or? It's not. I mean, if it, if it, if the ridge line, the top of the home, yeah, were bowed, then that's about that's thing. a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. This is just simply a a, a bit of a belly in it. That's mm-hmm. probably you go inside and you say, oh, here's something that's broken. It's just a mm-hmm. cord's broken, or or one of the braces is broken, and it's re- easy to repair. Okay. So, so what are some of the other things that so, you look for in a seller inspection? Uh, certainly, underneath the house, if mm-hmm. they have a crawl space, which is pretty typical in this market, they have crawl spaces or a basement. Or basement, but either way, underneath the house. Yep. Uh, that's what, what's holding the house up is the foundation. And mm-hmm. and uh, so looking at the foundation, looking at the structure underneath, uh, looking at the plumbing underneath, the wiring underneath, mm-hmm. all the things that uh, w- you know that are, are going to have a big effect on whether or not somebody's going to either buy the house or what they're going to ask for when they do get it, okay. when the offer is accepted. Yeah. Um, on the inside, I, I go through the components, you know, hot, the hot water tank, the, the furnace, how, however they heat the home. Mm-hmm. If they've got AC, look at the the appliances, uh, look at all the lighting and, and the, the wiring as much as I can, look at the panels, mm-hmm. um, and then just go through the house with a, an eye of, uh, you know, so uh, there's some things that people can do very easily themselves. Almost every homeowner can paint. Almost every homeowner can clean. Mm-hmm. And so I, I talk about some things that I wouldn't talk about typically to a buyer, mm-hmm. but there's some things they can do just to help themselves, help the, the real estate brokers. Yeah. No, I think that's. Uh, I think said, that's all good. He stuff. said every homeowner can paint. I can't. <laughs> okay, so almost every. Well, it's a Keller curse. All right. Is it a Keller it's curse? The Keller curse. Yeah, it oh, might man. not be related, but you did get that from our DNA some, yeah. at some point. I just had to throw it out there. How, maybe split. I'm a lit. Yeah. <laughs> or that's the way you t- teach your wife that hey, I can't do it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully Sorry, she is not Don't, listening. She's not. Don't yeah, tell anybody. Yeah, sure she's not. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so for homeowners, uh, what are the red flags that they look out for while they're kind of keeping their home up and maintaining their home? What are things that they need to kind of pay attention to just in well, general? Great, great word there, maintaining. Because mm-hmm. if, you, if, if you maintain your home, it's, every year you're going to go through a, a process and you're going to look over the rooftop. You're going to clean it if it's got moss on it. Mm-hmm. It's got debris or branches. If there's things growing over the top of a house, bushes, vines, trees, mm-hmm. if you're going to trim it back or have somebody do it, keep your gutters clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, plug gutters are brutal on a house. I mean, all yeah. sorts of bad things can happen. Well, and, and branches <coughs> getting close to a house or extending onto a house is the, pretty the, bad, too. because you're freeway. just Yeah, you're just giving a freeway <laughs> to squirrels, rats, mm-hmm. whatever. And all of them will be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that if you got anything near your house, Dan included. Yeah. Cut it back because you're just inviting yeah. them. Uh, the houses don't like to be touched. No. And so, uh, you know, keeping things away from the house, keep mm-hmm. seeing that the house is drying when the when the weather is dry, not staying mm-hmm. wet, mm-hmm. Um, cleaning debris off your flat, your concrete and your decks. Just keeping up, watching, looking at the windows, making sure that if it's heavy rain, you're not getting water inside a window, you mm-hmm. know, on a sill mm-hmm. or in a liner. Um, just look for things that are obvious because it's usually the obvious stuff. That's how you see it when you inspect a home. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you see and that's stains what I'm that obviously at. they knew. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's stuff that I'm looking at as yeah. representing buyers. When we're walking through a house, I'm pointing out a lot of the same things that Jeff ends up yeah. doing. Obviously, he does a way more in-depth look than I do. But just doing the quick cursory walkthrough, I'm pointing this stuff out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, look at this. There's rings of water that have dried and gotten wet again. Yep. This has happened more than yep. once. Obviously, the homeowner knew or yeah. should know. What's wrong? Yeah. What's the deal? 
-hmm. and and you know a lot of what's really common around here is that somebody will have a downspout and it'll come down to the ground next to the foundation mm -hmm. and they'll consider that good well we don't yeah. have any more water on the rooftop mm -hmm. so it's all underneath the house mm -hmm. yeah exactly because concrete is just a sponge it doesn't hold back any water uh, mm -hmm. just invites it in so that's one of the most common problems I see when I get underneath the house, that there's a lot of water intrusion mm -hmm. from the water that's being taken off the rooftop and diverted right next to the house. Yep, I've learned that the hard way with one of my <laughs> rentals. Yeah. The the people that live there kept knocking the, the downspout, uh, the part that shot it away from the house. They kept yeah. knocking it down when they would mow the, like, the yard. Mm -hmm. And then come winter, we'd get a call, my room is flooded. And I'm going, mm. um, okay. Yeah. So we come over there, and it's it's as easy as that. You put that back on, mm -hmm. problem solved. But yeah. Now i got to put new carpet in yep. and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So, You know, you and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, Christian, mm -hmm. and it's great that we've got Jeff on now to finally connect the dots. But what we wanted to do is put together a checklist going into this fall winter mm, yeah, of that's right, what that's to right. do to maintain. So yeah. I think on our website, seattlerealestateradio.com, mm -hmm. under the interview that we have, we'll have posted the podcast and the video of today's segment, mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll, we'll put the PDF link, the download of maybe the top 10 things that you can do, a checklist. Yeah, that's a great um, idea. To Because ma maintenance is huge. No, it is. It and if you're not maintaining yeah. it, it's just falling apart and well, it's going to cost you down the road. And it's a huge investment, too, that you're mm -hmm. letting just die. Uh, just die and lose money. So, no, that's great, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. He's... Uh, He's good at that. You know, Jeff this guy's helper. a stud. You know, during the br and I don't mean to get off on tangent, but during the break, you love was, tangents. I love it though. But I mean, <laughs> dude, I'm always chasing squirrels. You know that, Squirrel. man. Squirrel. Um, you said you got a text from a client. This is you got to hear this. This is okay. stuff you just can't make up. This is neat. He got a text from a client that was oh, at no, phone call or two, okay. two phone calls today at Home Depot. And you, and you inspected their home a year ago? Tell us about this. This is really cool. I, I inspected their home. It was actually a seller's inspection. They were they were planning their retirement. Part of that was, hey, we know we're going to be selling our home. Mm -hmm. And they're planning on selling it February 1. Put it, Actually, the weekend after Super Bowl. Put oh, it nice. on the market. After and, a Seahawk win. And so this it. guy's actually, a, he's a commercial electrician. So he's got hmm. some hands-on stuff he can do. Um, and so I gave him a long list. They had a great house, but there was a lot of stuff to do. Mm-hmm. So I gave him a long list, and he called today. He said, okay, now I'm getting into the list, and I'm going to prepare my house for sale. Mm. So he's standing in the aisle at, uh, at Home Depot, and he said, okay, now, I n remember you told me, I got the list, you told me my installation's upside down in the crawl space, which it was. It was turned <laughs> upside down. Mm. <laughs> so it's all there. It's cut. I said, it's going to be relatively wrong. easy. Pull it out and Flip reverse it, it, and here's how you put it back in, mm -hmm. because they won't be able to put it in the same way they had it in before. Yeah. So um, he's ask, he's going through the bins and he, so and I buy these and I buy these and you know what's the spacing on the joists and so then so I thought okay that's great so I got took care of that and then twenty minutes or fifteen minutes later the phone rings again it's the same guy <laughs> up in Everett and really good guy so it's it's kind of it's kind of nice to be able to help him out but uh, he calls me he says uh, okay now. I've got this problem. You told me about the like the problem I have between the chimney and the siding of the house and the water that's going in there. Mm -hmm. And you told me to buy this material, <laughs> and I see it here, but there's like three versions of it. Yeah. Wow. You know? That's how so, it always is yeah. with me, too. Yeah, so I get, it's got the same label, but there's a whole shelf full of it. Yeah. Which one do I do? So I said, well, look at the picture. He said, well, I didn't bring the picture that yeah, he sent well, me. So. That would have made it too easy for him. <laughs> so anyway, I solved the price. I, I helped him solve his problem, and nice. now he's off to his house to do some. Well, what i got to say based on that is yeah. home sellers, you guys really need to, to listen. And if you are thinking yeah. about putting your home on the market, maybe even before you call a real estate agent, call Jeff. I mean, really. Call Jeff. Yeah. Figure out, have him come out to the house, tell you exactly what's wrong with the house, what you need to do, what you need to prepare for, and get that list started. Because until that's done, or until it's close to being done, you're just shooting yourself in the foot with prices and stuff. Earlier so the better. Exactly. Mm. And, and Jeff's contact info is 425-233. 1361 or you can go vis visit him at alkiinspections.com. Right on. Great stuff, Jeff. Hey, we'll be back in a few minutes and when we come back, we're going to be talking about wine. Wine? Wine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts Christian Nossum and Dan Keller continues after this. Time for more Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller. All right, welcome back to Seattle Real Estate Radio. This is Dan Keller, and uh, wow, that was a good segment. That was great. That was really good. Jeff knows his stuff. Most Kellers do. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. <laughs> no, it's neat. I mean, I've never, uh, well, I know I don't really have much family around here other than the handful of people that I know, so it was neat meeting another Keller. And You don't uh, have family other than the family that you know. That's all I got. <laughs> that's a great statement. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm a baseball guy, and I was raised by Yogi Bearisms. Or what, exactly. what do they call them? Yeah. Yogi, Yogiisms. Yep. And um, we said that in unison. That was pretty. We did. We kind of harmonized a well, little. Well, we both too. like baseball. Well, that's true. And real estate, mortgage, yeah. all the good stuff. So that's no, Jeff get was, along so well. Yeah. Well, and look at that, mm-hmm. Keller's. He is, uh, again, you know, I mean, I, I'm not surprised that we're bringing on so many great guests, but this is our network. These, yep, are, people. these are the people that we know and yeah. that we trust. And, and I mean, I don't recommend people no. that uh, probably nine times out of 10, I've used them mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. And Jeff inspected the home we just yeah. bought this last summer. Yeah. I mean, he's good. Yeah. He's a great resource. I love the fact that. Much like what we do, it's not transactional, it's mm-hmm. relational. So when oh, yeah. we close a transaction, it's not, hey, I want you to call me. I'm doing an annual review. I'm checking mm-hmm. in to see what can I do to help you. Are there yep. things that we can do to help you? And so it's really neat to hear that you know, he told us another uh, story or situation where he had another client that he did a home inspection for a year ago, and they just reached out to him. They had a, they had a question on something that was happening with the house yeah. and what, what, oh, what, what they the should do. And he's, the thing, yeah, I mean, he's just cool because, yeah. I mean, I I talk to him all the time. I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, so I remember you said we needed some more, some additional attic ducting mm. or attic venting. Yeah. What exactly do we need? Yeah. I remember you told me, but yeah. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. And and anyone, any of his clients can call him up yeah. at any point or text him or whatever and yeah. be like, hey, so you said to use some product for this. What was it again? Yeah. And he's yeah. always available. Well, it's valuable to guys like you because here's the thing, it it. Not that it's a bad thing that your clients would call you. No, but it, it but makes you, it so I don't have yeah. to pay attention mm-hmm. to... It takes some stuff off my plate. Mm-hmm. I don't have to pay attention yeah. to home renovation yeah. things. Yeah. I, I don't have to keep up on the trends with that yeah. necessarily because he's on top of it, yeah. and that's my team. I don't have to. Yep. It makes my job easier, basically. Yeah. No, that's great. And he's great. I mean, he's, he's really good. So I want to encourage our listeners, go to the website. You can yeah. look up his info. You can go to his website. Yeah. From I'll say we, it again yeah. just for fun. Yeah. Because uh, it's Alki, like West Seattle's mm-hmm. Alki Beach, Alki Inspections with an S dot com. Mm-hmm. And his cell phone number again is 425-233-1361-425-233-1361. And yeah. Yeah. And he's just good. Good and guy. He's a good guy. Yep. And he likes sports. He likes sports. He's a, I didn't know he was a dog fan. Oh, yeah. He's a big time dog. He's had season tickets forever. Wow. Forever. Cool. Yeah. Good, good. Well, yeah. good stuff, man. So, I, we're talking about wine today. Yeah. I saw it on the agenda. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not opposed to it. I was saying at the very beginning of the show. Yeah, before you even had seen this part of before it. Before I even saw the, se- the last segment. But what in the heck? You know, so I took, I turned 40 in mm-hmm. September a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And up until this year, I did not, I was, you know, I would not drink wine. I just would order a beer. I'd order something else. I just mm-hmm. wasn't into wine. I think I'm getting old. <laughs> if now, you're getting old, so am I. Dude, I like red wine. Same I never me. thought I would. Yeah. I'm the exact same way. So it's it's been a weird switch mm-hmm. over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you're a beer guy. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, it's like... And so I was actually... I go to the Sandpoint. We're members yeah. of the Sandpoint Country Club. It sounds ritzy. It's really not that ritzy. It's but beautiful. It is beautiful. beautiful. But it's very, very family oriented. Yeah. We live a block and a half away. Yeah. That's why we are yeah. members there. But anyways, um, the other day for dinner, I was ordering a glass of wine. And I was talking. We know all the staff there because I'm mm-hmm. there all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just offhand comment like, oh, yeah. Well, for some Because they were like, which beer would you like tonight, Mr. Nossum? And I was like, actually... I'm going with wine, and they gave me a funny look, and I'm like, for whatever reason, over the last week and a half, two weeks, I've been obsessed with yeah. red wine. Yeah, and they're like, actually, so have I. Yeah, and the 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 bartender actually, she was like, you know, I think it's because of the the change in the weather. Mm. I think that's what it is. It's just you know, it got cold. It's a little more fall. Mm. It's a little more warming, like to drink red really? wine. Yeah, so I don't I was know. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know what it is, man. I really... I don't know either. I don't. So here's the thing. I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I, mm-hmm. I I tell my wife this all the time. I feel like an idiot yeah. ordering wine. I know. I, don't, I know what I like. I, I like a red blend. Mm-hmm. I don't 
know what goes into that blend. <laughs> I, you know, and so we were at a, we were at a nice restaurant a month or so ago, and I said, "Hey, um, can you recommend your uh, you know a nice blend?" Uh-huh. And she, of course, the server had to fire back with, "Would you like it predominantly blah, you know blah blah blah?" blah, blah, blah. And blah I'm blah. like, "Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great." And so, I had it. it so was, what you need to do is what Shannon and I yep. did, my wife. We just walked, watched this pretty interesting documentary called SOM. So hmm. like Somalier. Sure. The first four letters, yeah. S-O-M-M. Okay. Um, it's on Netflix. Okay. You can watch it. Um, write that down because I see you doing that. Yep. Um, it's actually pretty funny. So the Grand Solomier, or I can't say that word. It's, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not going to say it because now I can't say it. <laughs> Anyways, um, getting that distinction is insane. Really? It is Hmm. The craziest thing I've ever seen. Wow. Um, it's the opposite of getting your real estate license, which is the easiest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's the direct opposite of that. Okay. It is the hardest. There's like wow. 180 people that have ever done it or something wow. like that. Ever. And so what the documentary does is it follows these four guys. I think it was only four. It's four guys that are trying to pass the test. Mm. And it follows their journey. And it's just... It's crazy. So basically, they have to blind taste test wine, tell you what the wine is, Hmm. where it's from exactly, which country, which part of that country, which valley in that country, what year it is, everything. Wow. Blind. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's pretty fun to, huh. to watch this, and it's uh, wow. it's interesting. It's it's a fun documentary to drink a bottle of wine and, and watch sure. that at the same time. Well, you know, here's we've done a couple of wine. Jenny and I have done a couple of wine tastings, and um, I'm learning. I'm learning mm-hmm. a little bit yeah, more so about there. There's so much that goes into a wine. It's ridiculous. Like you were just saying, these yeah. guys and all the things they're quizzed on, but. Um, from like the different types of red red wines and blends, but mm-hmm. you know, I um, we. we well, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we threw a, a client appreciation party, mm-hmm. and one of uh, your cl- our clients or future yeah. clients, it, well, your clients, yeah, my clients. Um, own a winery. Yeah, they own a winery yeah. downtown. Structure Seattle? sellers. Structure sellers. Structure yeah. sellers. They're in Soto. Yeah. Um, Brian and Brandy, they are awesome, and they actually have every single wine that they've produced, yeah. and they've only been. I think their oldest vintage is 2011 or 12. Mm. Um, every single one that they produced has been award-winning. Wow. Like they yeah. submit them and every single one's won. Well, she, I learned more in 15 minutes of just, you know, chatting with her, maybe a little mm-hmm. bit longer, mm-hmm. but I learned more talking with her than I had at any wine tasting that I'd ever gone to. Yeah. I mean, obviously I was talking to a wine connoisseur and we were, it was more mm-hmm. of an informal environment, but, uh, phenomenal. Uh, I'm yeah. going to, we're going to, well, you have a I ton still, of their wine. You yeah, use do. their wine at all the, all the house housewarming yeah. parties so I this weekend. Promote them. Cause I always yeah. promote my friends and, and past clients and stuff yeah. like that. But, yeah. um, yeah, I, I still have not, I, I'm a bad person. I have not even gone to their their. Well, um, we're going. Yeah. Well, we, we need, need to, to go set down up there. Uh, our next it's business in Soto. Luncheon. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they're only open on the weekends okay. for tastings, and weekends are packed for me. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm showing houses yeah. all weekend. I'm doing open houses. I'm meeting yeah. with sellers. That's when people are off work. That's when I'm working. So, yeah. it's tough for me to get down there, but I'm sure they'll do a. I mean, hell, they'll do one at my house if they Impromptu. want to. Yeah, they'll yeah. just come over and do it. But I want to see their venue. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool from what they've told me and what I've seen online on well, Facebook. Well, I showed I showed her a picture on my phone of, mm-hmm. a, of a bottle of wine that our vice president took a, a couple of us out to dinner one night mm-hmm. and ordered a very expensive bottle of wine. It was it was great. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so I took a picture of it and and uh, she goes, oh yeah, yeah, this is equivalent to you know this wine that we make. And she was like, if you're looking to impress somebody with a label, yeah, that wine will do, but. I would take this wine that we make up mm-hmm. against that wine any day of the week for taste, and wow. you just need to try it. It was probably their Cap Franc, yeah. which is amazing. Is it? Their Cap Franc is mm. so good. I mean, my wife, is she's the producer well, of the show, yeah. which I need to give her a shout out. Shannon Awesome, producer of the show. She is amazing. She yeah. saves our butt numerous times a uh, session of recording and uh, preps the entire show I for mean, us. come on. So. How many people have radio shows whose producers are also attorneys? I love that's it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we got to get going. Let's that bounce. was a fun show. Yep. Um, tune in next Monday at 3. You're going to hear some updates on the housing and mortgage market. And, I mean, I'll just give you an update on what's going on in this yep. crazy place because it is, it's kind of crazy. It's crazy.
To contact the show or for more information, visit seattlerealestateradio.com. That's seattlerealestateradio.com. And be sure to tune in again next Monday at 3 for more Seattle Real Estate Radio with your hosts, Christian Nossum and Dan Keller, mortgage expert with New American Funding, right here on Business Radio 1300 KKOL.